Um, so today I'm going to share with you how I became a clinical molecular geneticist, and then I'll discuss the clinical laboratory-based career paths in genetics. I attended Birmingham Southern College, which is a small liberal arts college in Alabama, where I majored in math and biology. And I kind of had an opposite path as Dr. Adam. I actually was pre-med, on the pre-med track, thought that I wanted to be a clinician. And then after college, I decided, oh, I'm not 100% sure, so maybe I better think about this some more. And so I started thinking about graduate school and began researching the various programs that were available at the time. And just so happened that one day I got a call from my dad, and he said, you know, I just ran into an old friend of mine, and we had lunch. And he was telling me that his, his son just graduated from this really incredible sounding program called the Medical Genetics um, PhD program at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. And it really sounds like it'd be something you'd be interested in. So, you know, why don't you, why don't you look into that? And as usual, my dad was right. And I started um, getting more information about the program. And it, and it really did. It seemed like it was just the absolute perfect fit for me. So I applied. and was fortunate to get accepted into the program. And this was really a unique program at the time. It was um, established by uh, Dr. Sarah and um, Dr. Wayne Finley, who were um, both clinical geneticists, and they also were both founding members of um, ACMG. And the program was designed to train uh, residents in clinical genetics, but also to train graduate students in laboratory genetics, which was pretty unique um, at, at that time. Um, which was in the early 90s. And um, so in addition to performing um, my dissertation research, which was on therapies for cystic fibrosis, I also received training that was very similar to the current training for the ABMGG um, laboratory fellowship as it is today. And so once I completed my, my, my once I earned my doctorate and um, I, I just knew I was, abs I was absolutely certain that um, I wanted to be a, a clinical molecular genetics laboratory director. However, I was really having fun in the research lab at the time, so I decided that, well, before I, I continue on that path, I think I'd like to do a, a research fellowship first. So that led me to Vanderbilt University Medical Center, and I spent four years there working on um, tissue-specific knockout mice. And after four years of that, I was then ready to get back into the diagnostic world. And so I applied and was accepted to the Clinical Molecular Genetics Fellowship at the Greenwood Genetic Center, which is in South Carolina. And during that fellowship, I spent a lot of time in the lab, rotating through the different tests that the lab offered, learning all the molecular technologies, and then once I became proficient in those, I was able to actually perform the testing myself on patient samples. And so I learned, after learning all about all the tests, I also learned how to analyze and interpret those test results, and also to write the lab reports and communicate those results with the clinicians, the genetic counselors, and in a few cases, I even got to, to, to speak directly with the patients. I also spent quite a bit of time um, going to different genetics clinics with the clinical geneticists, and then we would also have a weekly case review where we went over patient cases. And I also um, learned how to be a supervisor and how to manage lab personnel, which is something that really most graduate um, school programs do not teach you anything <laughs> about, so it's kind of like you learn, you learn on the job. And um, I also spent quite a bit of time learning about the quality um, control and quality assurance uh, procedures that are needed to um, be in adherence with the regulatory requirements um, by entities such as um, CLIA and CAP. And so I successfully completed my two-year fellowship um, in molecular genetics and then um, passed my board exams and was offered the opportunity to stay on at DGC as an assistant director. And then a few years later, I became the senior director of the molecular lab. And then in 2014, when we decided to um, add whole exome sequencing to our diagnostic test menu, I took on the role of um, director of the clinical genomic sequencing program. So what does the typical day for a, um, a clinical laboratory director look like? Well, most directors will spend their time doing the activities that I previously mentioned, um, but it really it varies from lab to lab. In some labs, you will actually spend quite a bit of time overseeing the daily operations of the lab, while in other labs, you may have a, a lab supervisor or a lab manager who handles those responsibilities for you. But I think most directors will, will spend um, a great deal of their time 
looking at the test results, analyzing, interpreting those results, writing the reports, and communicating those results with the genetics professionals. And so where can you get a job as a clinical laboratory director? Well, they're found at most major medical centers, also in the private um, industry reference labs, and also in the nonprofit genetic centers um, such as GGC. So I did my training in clinical molecular genetics, but last year the ABMGG decided to combine the cytogenetic and molecular um, training programs into one specialty, which is known as the Laboratory Genetics and Genomics, or LGG specialty. So now there are two specialties. You can do either the clinical biochemical genetics or the LGG specialty. And clinical biochemical geneticists um, are involved in the diagnosis of, parent, of patients with inherited metabolic disorders um, such as PKU or galactosemia. So many of the newborn screening tests that are performed are looking for those types of disorders and if a, if a baby tests positive for one of those disorders, then that sample is sent to one of these biochemical genetics labs for confirmation. And many times um, biochemical geneticists will also spend their time monitoring the efficacy of treatment in patients with those types of disorders. And they can do this by measuring metabolites or enzyme activity um, of different um, types of samples to see how the, the, the therapy is working. And this is just um, a picture of some of the instruments you might find in a biochemical genetics lab. So there's high-performance liquid chromatography, or HPLC, um, and then most of the labs are um, also moving towards tandem mass spec. The LGG specialist um, is involved in the diagnosis of a broad spectrum of genetic disorders at the chromosome and DNA sequence level. And this slide just shows you some of the common techniques that are used in the cytogenetics and molecular labs, um, such as FISH and microarrays that are looking for deletions and duplications, um, and also Sanger sequencing and next generation sequencing, which are looking, are more targeted and are looking for single nucleotide variant changes um, or smaller deletions and insertions. So the fellowship is a two-year program in a clinical laboratory, and then you take your board exams, and you take both a general um, genetics exam and also an exam in your specialty. Uh, some of the training programs do require a longer commitment than two years because they also include a research component. In order to apply for one of these fellowships, you need to have an MD, a DO, or a PhD degree, PhD degree in genetics or some related field. And some of the training programs do require um, some prior um, postdoctoral experience. So when the training programs are reviewing these applications, what are they looking for? Well, I can only speak for myself, and whenever I've reviewed applications, I'm really looking for individuals who have thoughtfully chosen this career path, and their passion for genetics is really clear from their personal statements, which is a part of the application. And I also look at the letters of recommendation very carefully, and I'm kind of cued in looking for descriptions of the individuals as either you know, being very detail-oriented, um, that they have excellent work ethic and really great time management skills. Um, Obviously, proficiency at the bench is really important, and good communication skills are, are a necessity. Um, past experience demonstrating a genuine interest in genetics is not necessary or it's, it's not required. However, I would recommend it because there are a lot of applications now, and um, anything you can do to make your application more competitive um, is, is really good. And plus, it just kind of it's a way to help you um, figure out if this is really the career path for you. And there are quite a few um, um, internships for undergraduate students um, at many institutions, um, including including the uh, GGC. So why would you want to become a clinical lab director? Well, I can tell you that in this, this role, you'll never get bored. You'll never run out of things to do. You get to continually learn about fascinating new dis disorders and new technologies. If you enjoy managing um, or supervising individuals, there's, you, you, can, you can spend your time doing um, quite a bit of that. There's also many professional activities, such as teaching. If, if you enjoy teaching, um, you can publish papers. Uh, present at conferences, um, and you can join committees. And um, a lot of the lab directors are also involved in, in some form of research. So the job that we do is really intellectually stimulating and challenging. Um, 
directors are constantly juggling responsibilities and reprioritizing tasks, not just on a daily basis, but sometimes it's a minute by minute basis. I could be in the middle of uh, reviewing reports and then get an alert from our bioinformatics team that the whole exome sequencing data for our rapid NICU um, baby is ready to analyze, and so I immediately drop everything in and we'll review that, that case. Um, oftentimes the technologists will come to us because they can't get an, an, an assay to work properly and so the lab directors will use their experience and expertise to help guide them to figure out you know why what are the issues why the assay is not working and to get it working properly again and many of the cases that are submitted to our lab for whole exome sequencing or even targeted panel analysis um, these are cases that don't have uh, or patients that don't have a classic phenotype so they're not easily clinically diagnosed and so we really have to use our clinical knowledge our molecular genetics knowledge um, and our analytical skills to try to pinpoint the possible um, causative variants in those cases but probably the best reason for becoming a clinical laboratory director is that it is really extremely rewarding. We have the privilege of assisting in the diagnosis and management of patients. And we work closely with our clinical geneticists and genetic counseling uh, colleagues. Um, and it's really a team effort to work towards um, a diagnosis for each of our patients. So I will thank you for your attention. And if you want more information on the laboratory fellowships, um, please go to the ABMGG website. Thank you.